Uh, response video on the subject of antinatalism. Holy shit! Oh yeah, that's my subject. Uh, suicide for solenoid. Sol solenoid. Um, I don't even know what that means. Uh, he commits suicide for movies? I don't know. Anyway. Um, okay, another cliche glib video so far. So, 5 minutes 26 seconds into it. So I'll just do it in hunks and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, it's just the same old glib bullshit. I mean, here we are with the most important question in the world we could possibly ask is, you know, is life running a profit? It seems kind of important. It seems like, you know, something you'd ask, you know, am I getting value out of this toaster I have? You know, does it consume more electricity than the toast is worth? It seems like a kind of an important question. But to these guys, you know, these philosopher types, um... Yeah, it feels okay. That's what a philosopher does. He talks about how it feels. He actually said that it feels wrong. Uh, it's just hilarious. And, you know, to be a negative utilitarian. Um, so anyway, yeah, he starts off with the I don't personally want, which is just so incredibly uninteresting. Um, the, the real question is, is what's in the benefit, right? I mean, if, if life is a profitable enterprise, then you want to make more of it. It is profitable. It's doing something magical. It's like diamonds. We can just make free diamonds. Why wouldn't we make free diamonds? They're free. So, yeah, it's a legitimate question. Um, so the philosopher, I think, should do something like when he says that, he should say, wait a minute. Isn't the real question, when people have kids, should they have reasons or standards, you know, to the performance level of this thing? You're, you're going to be having, a, you're going to create a consciousness. Seems like kind of an important thing. Maybe there should be some standards. And then maybe we should talk about what kind of tests you should have to pass. I mean, you have to pass a test to drive a car. Seems like having kids would be pretty much a little bit, maybe more important than driving a car. So, yeah, maybe it should be a test. Maybe we should talk about what that test should be. And that maybe we could understand that failing the test would be, I want, as the complete answer to the question. Why are you having kids? I want. And that should indicate that, wait a minute, there has to be more than you want. Okay, <laughs> there does. Anyway. All right, um, then he uses the... Typical. I mean, how many times have I said it's not about morality, it's about value. But they always got to say the words. Having children is immoral. So that's his, that's the question he's asking. He's saying, anti natalists are saying it's immoral to have children. God says so. No, it's not what anti natalists are saying. Um, yes, that it's a negative value um, prospect. It's too high a risk and too unqualified a risk. You're you're risking somebody else's welfare, which means that the amount of risk that's acceptable when you're risking somebody else's welfare is much higher. So when you jump on the trampoline, it's okay for you to do silly tricks and take insane risks because it's your welfare. But when it's somebody else's welfare that you're forcing onto the trampoline, the standards are much higher. You can, a philosopher should be able to understand that, that the standards would go up higher when you're imposing it on somebody else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and obviously we could say that, you know, so couldn't somebody agree that it would be immoral to have children if you're doing it so you can molest them? People do that, you know, they have kids because, yeah, they want free molestables. Um, and certainly there's people who have kids as social security policy. Should people be able to have <coughs> kids for a social security policy? Should that be good enough reason? Um, because they want to pass on their name. That should be good enough reason. I don't think so. All right, so then there was the feel wrong statement. It just like the ontological argument from religious kooks, it just feels wrong. Yes, that's right. Okay, we can kind of understand psychologically. Of course it feels wrong because we've had four billion years of design pressure imposed on us to make it feel right. Yeah, and so the thinking people, the philosophers, are supposed to be able to understand that psychology isn't philosophy. Yeah, anyway. Um, don't like uh, 
let's see what the hell did I write other people's arguments so he doesn't like repeating other people's arguments well I think it'd be great if he did if you could find somebody else's argument and show it to me I'd really love to see an art an actual argument that is something other than it just feels wrong um, or uh, they say it's immoral or you know something like that so yeah if you, if you could repeat an actual argument I'd love to hear it an argument that defends the right of people to play God with somebody else's welfare when they have no God powers. That's right, they can't fix anything. They can't smite anything. They can't shoot meteors down. They can't flood everything. They can't, they don't have, they can't even make a flaming toad. All right, they have absolutely no God powers. And yet they think they have a right to play God. So why don't you just why don't you explain just that? Why don't you just give me an argument for that question? What, where do you people derive the right to play God with something else's welfare when you have no God powers? Yeah. Okay, that'd be a good one. Um, okay, so then he's going he's gonna to start telling us what our argument is. And it comes in three varieties, or, well, three and a half varieties, fuzzy and buzzy and wuzzy. Um, well, anyway, so it's this argument from crap. So he paraphrases us by saying, the argument from human suffering. Well, first off, it's not the argument I've made. Um, my argument would be the argument from suffering, period. But more, more rationally, the argument is too much suffering. Um, the argument from it's too expensive. So let's just say suffering is another word for expense and the, ar the argument is I'm making the argument from it's too expensive. That's right, it costs more than it's worth. Okay, your, um, your grandest pleasure does not compensate for the um, worst horror. It doesn't even come close actually. The worst horror consumes uh, almost uh, an infinite amount of your grand pleasures. I can think of one person dying of radiation sickness after we dropped the nukes in Japan and I can say what have I accomplished or you or any of these fucktards around me? How many of these fucktarded stupid existences um, you know, Batman existences um, are worth that horrible death imposed in that horrible way. First you watch your wife and kids die and then you slowly die vomiting to death. I can't think of anything you are ever going to do that's going to be worth that. Can you? You want to tell me what you've done lately that was worth it? Um... Yeah. So, um, yeah. So this this the argument from thing. I guess he'll do a couple of varieties of the argument from thing. But yeah, of course he's gotten it wrong as a premise to start with. So we're probably not going to go anywhere very fruitful here. Um, but yeah, I'd like you to deal with the argument from silly addiction. Okay. So that would be one if you know if you're taking suggestions. Um, explain how everything you do isn't just some sort of addictive psychology, and it really doesn't matter what makes you happy. It's all the same kind of wank. And do you really think your wanks are worth it? Um, and then frivolous, the argument from frivolous function, you know, that everything we do is pretty much for the frivolous purpose of replicating a molecule. Perpetuation for the sake of perpetuation. How come that argument doesn't make you feel something? Survival for the sake of survival. Perpetuation for the sake of perpetuation. How come you don't feel something about that? Like, somehow that doesn't sound quite right. Hmm? All right. Yes, I'm being a bit mocking, because this is just so glib. Like I said, the most important question I think the human race could possibly ask itself is, are we doing good enough? How we doing? Yeah, there was a mayor in New York, uh, Koch, he used to say, how am I doing? I think it's a reasonable question. How are we doing? And if you're going to answer we're doing just fine, or we're doing good enough, or that we have done good enough ever, I think you're full of shit. <laughs> yeah.
and there's very little prospect it's going to get better. Now all the writing on the wall, the, the writing in carbon on the wall, indicates it's not going to get better. <sighs> As I anticipated, it gets worse. <sighs> Gee, nothing new there, right? So he starts talking about shopping hour, which is kind of useless. He is dead, you know. Um, <laughs> frankly, he was a bad of a douchebag. But regardless, no brilliant quotes, but it doesn't matter. Um, so he, he, wants, he cuts through the utilitarian crap argument. Yeah, well, this idea that utilitarians have this, this notion. So he agrees that reducing harm or, or, or suffering is good. So it's good to reduce suffering. But that isn't really a good because that's not an affirmative good. You see, so preventing harm, that's not of any real value. Maximize good stuff and just don't worry about the bad stuff. And it'll all work out because love cures cancer. We all know that, right? Love stops earthquakes. We all know that, right? Love will save us from the greenhouse gases. Love. So anyway, <laughs> yes, it's just the same old bullshit. So, so he, you, you can't do something like, like I said, preventing, you know, preventing a harm is, the, is a negative way of thinking. That's a negative way of thinking. And you want to think positively. And so, yes, ethics should start with an affirmation. Um, drinking is fun. Yeah, okay, that's affirmative. Driving is fun. That's affirmative. So let's drive and drink. Yeah. It'll all work out because those are affirmative things. Those are both fun things. So how could it not possibly work out if we just drink and drive? It'll solve all our problems. They're both excellent, fun activities. So anyway, it's a, it's a typical thing. So he's going to tell me what he values. So of course, I'm supposed to value what he values. <laughs> you know, he thinks all oh, the new little children would value what he values because he's apparently the cliche traditional human of, you know, um, whatever, bacon eater. <laughs> anyway, so he thinks love and honesty and kinship and whatever will save the day. So if we all invest in love, honesty, kinship, and whatever, everything will be fine. All the animals will, will stop eating each other. It's going to be so cool. As soon as we start loving and human and, and uh, honesty and kinshipping and whatevering, everything will be just fine. And there's so much evidence that we are so full of love. Not bigotry. No, 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 no. Not nationalism. No, 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 no. We're full of love. There's so much evidence of it. And we're so fucking honest. I mean, uh, we are. It is what we really want to be is honest. Everybody is so fucking honest. Batman. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Kinship. Oh, yeah, we show it all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go kill some towel heads and show them some kinship. Oh, anyway, hilarious. Anyway. So anyway, so then it goes on to what I value. I just love that part. What I value. <clears throat> so it's just about him. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a philosophical subject. It's just about what he thinks is cool. Oh, man. He likes eating turds. He does. He likes swimming for turds. If there was a game show called Swimming for Turds, he'd be all the fuck in. And so he thinks we're all. That's the way we're all born. Doesn't if Hey, you people who don't like it, tough shit. That's just added tough shit, man. I don't have any. I don't have to put you in the ethical equation. We're loving the turd swimming, okay? You people don't want to swim for turds. Fuck you. You're gonna do it anyway, because I say so. Anyway. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah. Obviously, I don't think you're gonna reduce. You're not gonna cure the the competition. You're not gonna cure. Everybody's not going to be able to live on the beach, okay? <laughs> you know, because you have love and honesty and kinship. That's just not going to make it happen. Uh, there's not enough beach to go around, newsflash. Everybody doesn't get to live on the, the castle on the hill. There's only so many hills. Um, so anyway. So yeah, we haven't gotten very far. So I'll play some of this just so you get a feel for this wishy-washy, mishy-mushy, glib nonsense. Um, it is, it is 
it is through the affirmation of, of positivity rather than um, through the rejection of, uh, of suffering as such. Um, <clears throat> right, so the way to make a good nuclear power plant is just to be really aggressive and go all the way and don't, you know, don't mess with that risk averse stuff. You know, that I don't be hanging on those negative consequences and stuff. Go for it, baby. You know, maybe you, you know, the, you know, they'll come up with something in the future, like butterflies will start eating radiation. So it's not a big deal if it leaks a little bit. Oh, fuck. Now, the antinatalist wager, and this is what I would say I'm skeptical about, is that suffering is a is a, a much bigger deal than all of those positive values combined. <clears throat> all of the positive values combined. And what were they again? I Sorry, I forgot. Uh, love, honesty. Well, I mean, if you can't expect honesty, then what are we even here for? I mean, that's, you know, that's like, you could you set the bar even a little bit lower, right? I mean, you're, you're calling honesty an attribute? <laughs> I mean, as if there should be any degree of dishonesty. Ah, oh, fuck. Kinship. Share and share alike. There's so much evidence of people willing to do that. Um, so anyway, there's, there's, there's no, and whatever. That's all. I, that's all he gave me. Love, honesty, caring, and kinship. Yeah, that's all we got. So he says all that stuff is all the cancer. All the nursing home shit, all the horrible, horrible, horrible horrors that happen to people, earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis, it's this love thing. Yeah, trust me, it's worth it. Puyuk. <sighs> yes, yeah, it's, it's worse and worse and worse. Anyway, so we did the scale thing. Okay, so it's a matter of scales, and that one always gets you in trouble because then he's basically just saying, I think it's worth it. Okay, well, how bad does it have to get before you don't think it's worth it? If there is a, if I guarantee you there's going to be a World War III and in the next 20 years, and 2 billion people will be macheted to death slowly, is it still going to be worth it? I mean, how bad does it have to get before you say no moss? Please, let me give me some indication about how destitute, how depraved the average living creature's life on Earth has to get. How praying mantis eating you from the stomach out awful does it have to get before you go, okay, I get it, it ain't too good. Please, give me a description of how bad it has to get. She <laughs> said, "Anyway, all right. Um, I don't know. He's, he's, so, so, he, so now he, then. Well, well. I, I mean, I wrote down the unneeded need is not unneeded. That's sort of his argument that we somehow need to need our love and our value. And if we're not here to need love and value, I mean, love and honesty, then we won't have. To, there won't be anything here to miss it either. But somehow it'll be missed. Somehow it needs to be needed." If it isn't needed, if there aren't needers here to need, circularity. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, uh, is the universe dis the diminished because the Martians are not loving and telling the truth? There's a simple question, right? Is the universe substantially diminished because the Martians aren't here loving and telling the truth? Have you, how much time, why don't you tell me how many minutes, how many milliseconds of your life you've actually spent contemplating the non-existent Saturnites and, and lamenting the fact that they're, oh, they're not loving and telling the truth. How horrible. It's like the blimp disaster. Oh, the humanities. <laughs> oh, how many, how many seconds? How many, how much time? So here you are, this intelligence that can perceive value as some dignified, intelligent notions of these things, and yet you haven't spent any time lamenting the absolute horror of billions and billions of sentient Martians not loving 
and telling the truth. <clears throat> so, then he gets into the real deal. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, <clears throat> the constellation of values. So now it's, it's a constellation. And this philosophy, right? He lives in the world where it's a, there's a constellation of value. There, you know, and, and it's reducto ad certium. That's what he called it. Um, this idea of fail-safe is absurd conclusion. Choosing fail-safe is absurd conclusion. That's what he called it. He called it an absurd conclusion. And then said, I'm not dismissing it out of hand. Absurd. Dismiss. Absurd. Dismiss. Anyway, so I'll play that part. This is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it is funny. Trust me, it's pretty funny. Schopenhauer and Kierkegaard specifically that, that do affirm that. So I'm not, I don't want to uh, dismiss out of hand or make fun of someone who's an antinatalist or something like that. Um, I'll just say that their conclusion is that absurd. Yeah, they'll like that much better. They, Schopenhauer would love, much. he would love for you to say his conclusion is absurd. You'd find that, oh yeah, that's, thank you. What a compliment. Appreciate it. Because I think that that case can be articulated um, with some intellectual weight. It's just that I, I don't <laughs> buy it. Oh, wow, gee, isn't that a counter-argument, right? It can be articulated with some weight, yet I don't pay any attention to that. Because, you know, the, I don't, you know, fuck it, who cares? So what? It's a, yeah, it's a weighty argument, but... You know, I've shoved heavier things under the rug. I'll shove this one under it. I mean, what the fuck is this? This this fucking glib bullshit. You concede its weight and then you call it absurd. Fuck. Right. I just don't. I don't see it. Right. I don't. The the force of the argument isn't isn't there for me. Right. <clears throat> isn't there for me. Yeah, well, that's I can do so much with that. I have so many counter-arguments for the it isn't there for me. It doesn't make my dick hard. Okay, I get it. If things have to do that, do they? If you don't get a gooey feeling for it, then there's no point in talking about it. So if I don't, if I don't um, take all legislation and all, all theoretical science and put little ribbons on it so you can get emotional about it, there's no point in talking about it. Um, so there's a second line, uh, or I guess, well, whatever, I'll play this. I don't, I don't know what's coming, but we're halfway there. Oh, God. All right. Um, yeah, it just keeps getting worse. Trust me. Anyway, so now he's brought up Nietzsche. And so he's, he called this his favorite Nietzsche quote. Men don't want to be happy. Only Englishmen want to be happy. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Phew. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, no, I, no, no profound bells are ringing. Trust me. Um, anyway, um, so then he, he paraphrases the argument really horribly again in terms of qualifying antinatalists as uh, believing in some sort of will to be happy. Eh, no, afraid not. Um, <laughs> in the utilitarian perspective. Um, and and you know that obviously it's it's exactly the opposite. Um, maybe I'll title this you know suffering is bad. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, that's a better quote. Um, gee, you know, you, you you use the words before negative utilitarianism. I mean, it's it's a fair cop kind of description. If you have to pigeonhole us, even though we never asked you to do that, thank you very much. But if you have to do it. Um, that certainly would be the rational terminology, but a will, people, antinatalists believe in a will to be happy? No, no antinatalists basically believe you're running for your life, so to speak. You're running for your life because there's something trying to get you, which is suffering and death. Anyway, <laughs> so he calls it a rash conclusion, but he likes this argument better. Okay, so we're heading to the, the better argument. Um, 
Uh, but it was, he, he considers antinatalism a rash conclusion um, because, you know, there's obviously so much that the human race has demonstrated its magnificence. It's, it's, it's right on the brink of being so fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is going to just wait. Just wait till we have enough carbon in the atmosphere because then it'll be like um, this really cool effect will happen where all this it double and triple the radiation in the atmosphere and with a little bit extra radiation, you know, it'd be like Superman. You know, we're, we're going to get, it's going to be all good for us. So anyway, so yeah, you got 10,000 years of gro gross human, rec recorded human history. Um, and before that, I'm sure it was no picnic. But yeah, no, there's all kinds of evidence. We're, we're right on the edge. It's a rash conclusion to say it isn't working. So anyway, the argument he likes better is the argument from coercion, he calls it. Now, you know. How many times have I said the word imposition? I mean, imposition is a much better word. I, you know, coercion? You're not coercing a baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, get serious. How can you coerce it? It's a goddamn blob. Uh, no, you're imposing it. You're, you're, it's an imposition. It isn't a fucking coercion. You're not making a deal. You're not contracting. You're not uh, influencing in some sort of persuasive way with external mechanisms, you're physically building it and shoving it into the world. It's a little more than coercion. So anyway, so he gets lost with this coercion word, and then he starts, you know, even though he likes this argument better, um, uh, let's see, uh, a question of, what is that word? Uh, artness, artness. Awareness, no. Question of, well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, it probably wasn't important, so I'll just play a little clip here. So he, he's now he's back to the the classic argument, is that you can't coerce somebody who isn't here. Can't coerce a baby. And, you know, and you're just like, oh come on. You know, I mean, there's n there is absolutely no rational way to disconnect the act of procreation from the existence of adult organisms. There's no way to make that disconnection. Procreation will create adult organisms. It will create them. Fuck. I, I, I do feel like I, I don't know what it means to coerce a non-person. Right? I don't know what it means to coerce. Well, you know, a non-person, does it mean like when you shove a bit in a horse's mouth and pull on a cord? <laughs> you know what a cattle prod is? There's lots of coercion for non-persons. Um, yeah, you, you physical acts are automatically coercive, obviously. They're pressure you're placing on something that's going to change their destiny so it's a coercion of and and again you can't get more in somebody's face than to make their face fuck you know uh, like the baby doesn't exist before you have before at the very least the pregnancy oh, right 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 and we have no clue what's going to happen it the baby might probably is just going to be a cup of water. It's not going to be a baby. There's no likelihood or absolute probability or guarantee, almost, that it's going to be a living, sentient being. You're just like, why the fuck am I talking to people this fucking stupid? You shouldn't even be allowed to say the word Schopenhauer. And, and then pretend you don't know that babies turn into human beings. That babies are how, that's, that's the natural process. That yeah, you make the seed, you put the seed in the dirt, and it's, the, the thing turns into a tree. You know you made a tree when you made the seed. Get real. Fuck. Yeah, sum it up. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. Can't conceive. Oops. <laughs> yeah, can't conceive. Uh oh. Um, oh yeah, the, the ontology thing, uh, epistemology thing, whatever crap. 
Um, so the process, you know, so so he again, you know, so again, he's using this word coercion, which I think is a stupid word to use when it comes to procreation. But regardless, I would use imposition, and he can't see the connection between the direct connection between the act of having a baby, you know, choosing to fertilize a cell, let it mature in a uterus, um, come out of the uterus. <laughs> keep it and raise it into a human being. You can't see the, the lineage of that process. You can't recognize the process as being a complete process. Um, and that the end is knowable and obvious. So it's just like I would argue turning the key on your car. When you turn the key on your car, you're not really turning the car on, right? I mean, first you're initializing the electrical system, and then when you push the key further, you're to have a solenoid pulls gears into each other and then the starter motor turns and then the gear turns and then compression is created in the cylinders and then the electrical system throws in sparks so there's a whole process before the motor starts running so are you going to say that you can't see the connection just because it happens in a briefer period of time but it's a very complex amount of stuff happening so because there's a lot of stuff between turning the key and the car running, you're going to say you can't see the connection, or you can only see connections that are very quick in time, ones that take a longer period of time, all of a sudden aren't connected. So if I dump dioxin into the Great Lakes, I didn't really poison the Great Lakes as long as they're in 100-year barrels. So if the dioxin only spills into the Great Lakes 100 years from now, I didn't pollute the Great Lakes. Come on. I mean, I've, well, I've already made these arguments. It's just silly. All right, and then um, let's see. Not a reputation, just talking shit out of my fucking skanky ass. Oh, I guess he didn't say that. He says it's not a reputation. He's just uh, spiffing on the subject of some kind. Just, just why I'm not this or that. And the bottom line is right. So at the end, he saves the biggest punchline for last. He's one of these value relativist assholes. He thinks people just make up value. <clears throat> there's no such thing as child molesting being bad, and there's no such thing as harm being a bad thing. Because sometimes harm is perfectly good because you make lots of money off of it. So if you can make, you can torture one slave and make a hundred people really happy by torturing him, it's a deal, man. No problem. It's all value relativism. It doesn't. There's no real value here. Torture all the animals you want because they have no relative opinion anyway. See, they don't have opinions. They're not philosophers. So you can torture them forever, and it doesn't matter. Did I say so? <laughs> Me and the other um, greedy, selfish, uh, selfish, 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 greedy, selfish, selfish, selfish motherfuckers. Um, say it's okay, so it must be okay to make it up. Whatever you like, buddy. Fuck you. I mean, I just can't hate anything. <laughs> There's nothing more hateable than value relativists, you know. They're just absolutely evil. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just no doubt about it. It can go nowhere good. I'm going to make it up. <laughs> I'll just... I'll take a shit, and whatever my shit says, I'll do. Because it just doesn't matter what I do. I just, yeah, fuck. People are just too fucking stupid. Anyway. Until next time.